everybody, Dave Monahan here again, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and now it's time for another episode of Tech Lab Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about flywheel grinding, or the big question is, why do you guys offer 500 different kinds of flywheel grinding stones? What's up with that? Well, I'll tell you, not all grinding stones are created equal, so we have different grinding wheels for different applications. You've got a variety of metals that these flywheels and other clutch components are made out of. You got your cast iron. With cast iron, we want to use silicon carbide abrasive. For your cast steel, we want to use a silicon carbide oxide combination abrasive. When we get into the billet steel, we want to use aluminum oxide abrasive. Of course, for CBN, that's designed for cast iron. You can get that in 100 grit or 60 grit. And uh, our diamond stone is for these coated components that are out there in the performance world. This is a special coating that goes on here and we need an actual diamond pass CBN to grind that. But uh, So they all have a reason for being. I'll let you know for a fact that the most popular flywheel grinder in the world that we see is our FGW57. This little guy right here has been the go-to flywheel to grind your Chevys and Fords for year after year after year. The second most popular wheels when we get into the steel, again this is for cast iron, silicon carbide abrasive, we get into those steel alloys, we want to salt and pepper, this FGW65. This is, a good, this is a good wheel, it grinds really fast, it's very aggressive, gives you a long line, but we got to change it out when we got that cast steel or that billet steel, because this has the aluminum oxide in it, as well as the silicon carbide. I have some teams and some people, customers out there, that prefer the sugar white wheel. Now this is all aluminum oxide, this is for billet steel. And I see a lot of, a lot of alcohol dragsters, pro stock guys, and uh, what have you are, are using that to grind this floater. They'll use that sugar white wheel for it. But that's why we offer so many different ones, and they're a, of a different hardness, so you go up and down the scale. So I like for you to start, if you've never ground the flywheel before, it just came in your door, and, and let's talk about that. How do you know if it's made out of cast iron? How do you know if it's made out of steel? That's a good question. In the back of the flywheel, if it's made out of cast iron, it'll be just like a small block Chevy. It'll be nice and bumpy back here on the back. If it's made out of steel, for, for those more mature machinists out there, it'll be machined all the way around. It'll look like a record album, just like we used to have in the vinyl days in the 33 and the 30. RPM record. So if it's been machined all the way across on the back, that's a steel flywheel. If it's got those bumps like a small block Chevy or small block Ford engine block or cylinder head, then it's cast iron. So pretty simple to, to, to have the difference differential uh, between that. I can't even talk right now. Anyway. anyway, so we have a lot of different variety of vitrified abrasive. Uh, probably one of our, our newer additions that uh, that actually Radiac came up with. And that's our big brute. That's this little guy right here. Actually, it's a big guy right here. That's why we call it. That's why we call it the big brute. Let me get a little bit closer to show you this. It was based on the FGW57, and just look at the dimensional difference between these two wheels. The big brute can do all that. It's a brute of a grinding wheel, so you can get a little bit more aggressive with it. You can put a little bit more down pressure on it. You'll get a little longer life out of it. And we've seen a lot of a lot of customers uh, migrate towards the big brute but the FGW57 is there when you need it as well. Now one thing for sure you can't get away from is all flywheel grinding must be done with coolant. You gotta have coolant in the equation. Our synthetic coolant, or FG1101, you mix it 30 to one, so this one gallon container will make you about 30 gallons of uh, material. Most of the reservoirs in these flywheel grinders will hold anywhere from about eight to 15 gallons, depending on whose model you have. Uh, so make sure that you always have good clean, fresh coolant in the equation, because it's doing a couple of things. Keeping this grinding wheel cool, when it's grinding, it's also taking the grinding material away, the breaking down of the of the uh, flywheel stone itself, it's taking that away, it's keeping the workpiece uh, cool, and it's keeping the inside of the machine from rusting. All very important factors when you're grinding flywheels. Another thing you need to keep in mind is, is the dresser itself. A little star dresser for your Winona Van Norman machines or the larger dresser for the DCM and some of the other makes and models that have been out there. You've got to dress the wheel because, as I mentioned, during the grinding process, the stone is going to load up. 
proper aggression on the feed can help it break down, expose new edges, and keep yourself grinding. But when you mount a new stone, you need to dress. And if you're uh, a long-term grinding on a particular uh, 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 troublesome fly wheel, it's all blued and heat checked and what have you, you might want to back off a little bit, give him a fresh dress, and then reattack that fly wheel. So you got to be able to dress, you got to have good cooling. Some machines even had a, uh, in the area here, we call it the radius, which is right in here, and they have a thing called a radius cutter, and that's what this is, a little carbide cutter, and it mounts basically over here where this dresser is on those particular machines, and as good as the edge that can be held with that stone, sometimes it it'll leave a, a round radius in there. Well, this corner cutting, a radius cutter, gets right back in there and cuts that 90 degrees. Some machines came with that, other machines didn't. But in case yours did, we've got your radius cutter to take care of right here. Now with a CBN wheel, we cannot use this type of dresser. No, we can't, not at all. There's no way we're gonna use this machine-mounted dresser to come across this 200 plus dollar a grinding mill because it'll just shatter. It'll just completely destroy it. When it comes to dressing CBN, we need a special CBN dressing stick. This thing is mounted, it's running at 3,500 RPMs, and by hand, we're going to get in here and unload or, or, or braid this particular material so we can expose new edges, get that thing to unload, and get back into the grinding mill. So you hand dress CBN. And you star dress that try to brace it like right here. One thing we can never forget in the whole equation when we're grinding flywheels is safety. you got to have safety first. I, I recommend you, you wear an apron just to keep your clothes clean, but let's protect the old eyeballs, let's protect our face. Wear your face safety shield when you're grinding flywheels on a, on, a, on a daily basis when you're back down there. It only takes half a minute to get somebody hurt, and as I've always said, safety first, don't forget your towel. We also have a tool, it's called a, uh, it's just a dial indicator on a flat piece of bar. We've got a couple of magnets here. On these step flywheels, this is where the clutch is mounted, this is where the disc rides, inside of there, like that. This is where the wear surface is gonna be, so if I take 30 thousandths off of here, I've gotta take 30 thousandths off of here as well. And I'll tell you, as accurate as this hand wheel is up here, they've all got an acme thread in there, one inch diameter acme thread. It's very accurate. When you move 10 thousandths, this whole head will move 10 thousandths. It's not smart enough to know how much of that stone broke down during that grinding process. That's why we have to measure. Remember, if you're not measuring, you're just guessing. So again, when it comes to flywheel grinding, goods and tools and supplies, we've got you covered. We've got coolant, we've got dressers, we've got the know-how, we've got the measuring tools, the safety face shields as well. Flywheel grinding can be a real profit uh, machine for your machine shop. You can feed your flywheel grinder hourly. You can turn this thing into a $200 an hour machine very, very quickly. It's just gotta be fed. So when it comes to selecting flywheels, Grinding stones, if you don't know, give us a call, 800-533-8010. Ask for one of our tech service people. They'll walk you through the process step by step on which we will be best suited to start with and for the different variety that you uh, would be encountering as your customer bring you different flywheels to grind. Again, we're Goods and Tools and Supplies. Catch us on the phone, 800-533-8010, or get us on the web, goodson.com. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.